Let's rock. Thanks, Dad. Can I get a whoop No Man Presents, live from the nudie bar, the Married with Children Podcast. And here are your hosts, Jerry, Justin, and Al. Hey, what's up? You're on Married with Boycotting. Uh, (laughs) I mean, children, something. I'm Al, and I'm joined by, no jokes to intro him, Jerry. What's up, brother? Not much, man. I am here, not representing Michigan. And we are joined, uh, surprisingly, (laughs) wow, his laugh is the first thing we've heard. (laughs) <laughs> in God, what is this? Like six shows? <laughs> Justin, it was it was the fir- first time we hear him outside outside Free of a last. payphone. Yeah, like, dude, how long were you locked up? Six weeks? Yeah, something like that. And it feels good to be free at last. Free at last, you know. Uh, thank you guys for helping me get out of there. Honestly, I mean, it's not as bad as you would think, but still, like. Well, you were in Canadian jail. That, that's why. That's hey, why. listen, if you were in jail, <laughs> would you rather get raped by Al or Steve? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a joke that no one will get because that was edited out and lost to time. Why on earth did you ask that question? Oh, listen, I'm willing to play <laughs> this was... now. Why were you willing to ask that question? I thought it would be an interesting question to be like, you know, we're putting Steve and Al in a, in a jail sa- setting. Who's getting raped? Who's doing the raping? Oh wait, here? was it when they were going to rob their own bank? It was when they were going to rob their own bank. Jerry, are you trying to get us a letter from Michigan from a woman? <laughs> what are you trying to do? Oh, I can't talk about. <laughs> yeah, what if somebody gets offended by this? Well, if you guys haven't realized yet, you're listening to a special. This is the last special we'll ever do. Beyond the Patreon uh, exclusives. So this is going out to the general public. This is the Terry Ricolta special episode. Hey guys, my name is Christine and I'm from Germany and I'm a huge fan of Married with Children and also your podcast. I think you guys are doing an amazing job. I just recently started listening to all the episodes and I'm almost caught up now and it's so much fun to listen to you guys picking all the episodes apart and spotting details that just casually watching one probably wouldn't even see. And I know it's a lot of work so I'm so grateful that you guys uh, do this every week and put together amazing episodes. And the episode you reviewed last, Her Cups Runneth Over, is actually one of my favorites, which is funny because when I first watched it, I didn't even know that it was the episode that actually caused Terry Ricolta to write all her letters to the sponsors and the advertisers to get their ads pulled. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really funny. That was the thing that made Married with Children so successful in the following years, and I'm actually very thankful for that because they've had an amazing run, even though I wish they could have had a final episode or something. I think it's really great that (laughs) she was actually, even if unintentionally, the one who um, made the show so successful and made the ratings rise. So yeah, keep up the good work. This is one of my favorite seasons, so I'm very excited to hear the rest of the episodes. I hope you continue to have a great run, and I wish you all the best. So what happened is, Marrow Children's been going now for two seasons. The third season just started, and we're at like, you know, the sixth episode or whatever. They just did The Cups Runneth Over. Levitt and Moy's show attracted a small but loyal audience of younger viewers with a tolerance for edgy humor. It was definitely outside the mainstream. But that would soon change 
when a conservative housewife from Michigan would stumble upon an episode of Married with Children and decide she didn't like what she saw. In 1989, Fox TV's Married with Children was about to start its third season. At the time, Fox was still a relatively obscure startup network. All of America's top 20 shows were on ABC, NBC, or CBS. But Married with Children's outrageous brand of humor was catching on. Every week, it kind of built and built and built and built, with very little advertising. So clearly, people were standing around water coolers going, have you seen this thing? Oh, you got you got to turn this on. This is the wildest thing. you got to see this. This is married with children thing. You, you, you're not, you don't believe what they're doing over there. And that's how this show's popularity started growing. According to Nielsen ratings, about 3% of American TV viewers were tuning into Married with Children, making it Fox's number one show. What the Fox executives didn't know was that the show was about to experience an unwelcome explosion of publicity. On Sunday night, January 15, 1989, conservative Michigan housewife Terry Ricolta tuned in to Married with Children for the first time. The episode that caught her attention was called Her Cups Runneth Over. I remember some specific stuff in that episode that was, uh, you know, at the time perceived as really, really racy. I took a close-up shot of a girl's backside uh, as, she, as she walked across the room, and you didn't see that on TV. It wasn't gratuitous. It, it actually set up a really funny line. Uh, let's see the Japanese build a better one of those. <laughs> There's a to totally legitimate moment in, in, in setting up the comedy, but it was also some stuff that kind of, you know, rubbed some folks the, the wrong way. I sent my children out of the room after five minutes of this trash, but I'm excited to watch and see what kind of low-class advertisers would support this type of program. When Terry Ricolta went on a rampage about the show, one of the things that she did was call our production offices directly. Fox was such a small network at the time, they didn't even have a department to field complaint calls. So they connected Ricolta directly to Marcy Vosberg, the writer of the episode. I got a phone call saying, Somebody didn't like her cups run it over. That was your baby. Take the call. All right. So I answered the phone, and there's this woman saying, I saw your show last night. It was absolutely offensive and everything. And I said, well, I'm really sorry. And I can understand that. My mom doesn't really like the show very much either. And, but we're just trying something a little bit new. And I said, we sort of take a British approach to censorship. If it's offensive, you can always change the channel. There was no protocol for how to handle complaints. And they usually sent me out because I was... And I was the wimp. I was always the sweetest person, so they figured I, I wouldn't get us into big trouble. Um, mistake. They were wrong. <laughs> the conversation with Marcy Vosberg did nothing to subdue Ricolta's resolve, and she launched a letter-writing campaign to the sponsors. She had faxed all of the CEOs of companies that were advertising on our show. If you indeed support this type of programming message, I will be obligated to take the next step and start a boycott of all your products. I remember walking into the office and one of the uh, secretaries explained to me that, you know, this housewife in Michigan had written to Fox complaining about the show and that she was being apparently taken very seriously. And I'm still kind of laughing at this because I'm just, well, when you say one housewife, you mean as in one housewife? You want me to like address this seriously? Wouldn't have said this a month ago, but I can say honestly that one person does make a difference. In an unprecedented response to just one viewer's letter, several huge corporations agreed and pulled their ads from the show. Said McDonald's, we felt the program was not consistent with our family image. Procter & Gamble replied, we share Mrs. Ricolta's interest in quality TV programming. And it took me almost the entire day to realize that this is really serious. I almost got fired. The network was like, get rid of her, she'll be the token fire, and then we could say we did something, and Ron and Mike said, no, 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 no. Uh, it's, you know, we made her take the call, and you're lucky if Marcy hadn't taken the call, it would have been worse. <laughs> It was a page one story in the New York Times. Fox executives wouldn't comment to me. They would not speak to me for the article. 
So that shows what a hot button issue it was at the time. Fearful that they would lose much needed advertiser support, Fox clamped down on programming and refused to air an episode titled, I'll See You in Court. There was an episode that we shot that was deemed, in light of this controversy, too sexy to broadcast. The episode featured a storyline about spicing up your sex life through something called Vegetable Night. I want to have sex on the kitchen table. <laughs> I want to have a meal on the kitchen table. Because it came so close on the heels of the Repulta thing, they just, ah, you can't, you can't do that. You watch this episode now and you just, what, are you kidding me? This was the big deal? Advertisers, and now Fox, were afraid of the negative publicity surrounding the show. The concern with the network at the time was because Married with Children was still finding its footing. Uh, it was still in that critical stage where, okay, are we going to get through the first you know, five years of development, or are we going to crumble because all of our advertisers are going to uh, pull? After just three seasons, Fox executives would have to make a decision. Ride out the storm of controversy, or abandon ship and cancel Married with Children. Married with Children was in its third season when conservative Michigan housewife Terry Ricolta watched an episode and thought it was too offensive to be on TV. She launched a media blitz urging consumers to boycott the show's sponsors and its network. What you did was write major corporations the sponsors such as Coca-Cola. Yes. And I asked them why were they promoting this type of programming? Major advertisers got nervous and pulled their support. Many thought that Fox might also succumb to pressure and cancel the show. This is the first real controversy that Fox the network was in, involved in and I guess they didn't know what to do. Everybody was afraid. But as the saying goes, bad publicity is better than no publicity. Suddenly, people are like, what is she talking about? What, what is this little show that I've never seen or never heard of? What Terry Ricolta didn't realize was that she was doing Fox and Married with Children a favor. They didn't have the money to compete with ABC and CBS. They couldn't put out full-page ads in the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal. They couldn't advertise and on some of the other outlets the big three had. If there's controversy about a show, people will watch it to see what they're missing. And then you have a chance to, to keep that audience. Ironically, she helped the show tremendously. A lot of the more timid advertisers left the show because of her protest. But advertisers who paid more money came in after. I know if this show continues to pull the highest ratings like it will now because it's on everybody's lips they're going to come flying back in you know on their knees and just say please it, 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 take our money please we got to advertise on, on this show after the Ricolta affair through 1989 married with children set an all-time television record by increasing its overall ratings an unprecedented 117 percent I knew Mary with Children was a hit when I was at the Vines in Los Angeles and, and there was a person in front of me and a person behind me in line and the checker who were talking about the episode that had just aired. Ricolta's campaign to shut down Married with Children backfired and she found herself the brunt of jokes on the show. The producers of Married with Children every now and then would write in a, a, a line about some crazy woman in Michigan who was calling to complain. Oh, I thought it was a hit. Well, some woman in Michigan didn't like it. You know, just little inside things that we would do to amuse ourselves. Behind the scenes, you know, I understand they sent her gift baskets of, um, you know, fruit and, and things every Christmas. It wasn't us. It wasn't Ron and I. You know, she had caused us too much in the way of you know, problems and, you know, digestive ailments for us to send her anything. But, uh, yeah, somebody, I'm glad someone did. She was really offended by the fact that they were in a bra store, the fact that a guy walked out in garter in a garter belt and women's panties and stockings or something. And that Steve 
innocently enough was inspecting merchandise that happened to be on a mannequin and the merchandise happened to be on the nipple of the mannequin. Yeah. <laughs> he was just doing quality testing. You don't buy something without making sure. He didn't even know if it was made in America. He was just trying to make sure that the Japanese didn't make it better. Yeah, Japanese never built a better one of those. Uh, <laughs> so Steve goes into this, like, uh, like I alluded to in the last episode, a whack-off room or whatever. Like, I, I don't know what he was going into. But you know what? She doesn't. She never brings up that. It was just the implied nudity that a guy was wearing women's clothing and that the mannequin was touched in the breast area. And how about Al reaching for women's breasts to try to figure out? But you know what? I never heard her talk about that either. I'm, I'm, I can't, I don't understand why old dude in a garter belt and panties is an issue. But you don't bring up uh, Steve going to a jack off room. You don't go talk about Al trying to grab the breast of some young lady. We we talk about. Terry Ricolta or Ricola. <laughs> Did anybody remember that commercial? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, I, that's actually the brand of cough chops I go for when I'm sick, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, hey, listen, she, who knows? I mean, sometimes I wonder how I started watching Mary with Children, and I wonder if it's because, I wonder if my parents got me into it. I don't know. Like, how would I have found it at 11 years old or whatever? I don't know. I kind of think it was my parents, and would they have found it had it not been for Terry Ricolta? Like, would I be sitting here today, or would this show not exist? Who knows? Who knows where any of this would be right now without Terry Ricolta? So we can't really... Which is hilarious. <laughs> we can't hate her, exactly. It's a weird thing. That's true, because the, the Christmas episode I did was from episode from, like, season seven or nine or something like that so i thought it was eight was it, it might have been season eight so like it was from season eight um uh take my wife please i think was the episode like yeah how would they've even gotten that far if it wasn't for this probably incident? not i mean you you know the story right like like fox you think of fox and it's like oh it's fox but it's really kind of hard to put your mindset into a time where fox was like not fox you know it was it was it was like starting up and and their numbers were low and married with children was was low in their numbers too and who knows if it would have even made it past season three had it not been for this letter uh or did she did she write a letter did she call what did she do she called and they they let her talk to the writer who, right, was who the writer? wrote the episode <laughs> because they they had such a small office and in a small uh you know area to where they were like all in house you know and everybody did multiple jobs so like nowadays you think about this right and if you, if you don't like something right if you don't like the way that the american horror story did their uh, yeah, you, if you call in, you'll go to the writer of that episode. Could you imagine? Could you just imagine that? <laughs> if if that happened, I would be like, uh, uh never mind, <laughs> and I'd hang up. Because yeah, I'd be like, wow, you wrote this episode. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, like I wouldn't even know what to say to this. Yeah, person. I interview it, you for a podcast. Yeah, yeah, like I wouldn't even know what to say to the person who wrote the episode. So she talked to Marcy Vosberg, the person who wrote it. I'd be like. Uh, who am I talking to? Marcy Vosberg. I, I wrote the episode. Oh, wow. Really? So, so what's on the next episode? <laughs> you know, like I would, I would kind of forget that I'm complaining. All right. Here's the article from the New York Times, March 2nd, 1989. A mother is heard as sponsors abandon a TV hit. I'm just going to read the stuff from this article that is sort of different from everything else we've been reading or hearing. The cancellation of commercials reflects the growing sensitivity of television advertisers to the more productive programs being produced since the Federal Communications Commission began deregulating the industry under the Reagan administration. The growth of cable television has also encouraged broadcasters to program material that once would have been rejected as inappropriate. Fox executives dismissed the financial effect of the action, saying the program is solidly booked with advertising through the seasons, and even has a waiting list. But Jamie Kellner, 
president of the Fox Network, said he had asked the producers of the program to tone down its script because, quote-unquote, they were pushing the show a little too far. He denied that the changes were a result of Miss Ricolta's complaints. Executives at several companies and advertising industry experts said the response to one person's complaints was highly unusual. This goes beyond our normal concern for such consumer reaction, said Tony Torsitti, a spokesman for Coca-Cola, on the air since 87. It is not unusual for advertisers to withdraw commercials from controversial programs or form those deemed potentially offensive, but Married with Children has been on the air since the spring of 87, and it is the most successful series today on the fledgling Fox network. Last week, the program had its highest ratings ever. Miss Ricolta, who was 41 years old, began her letter-writing campaign on January 15th, after she sat down with three of her children to watch an episode of the program, which is broadcast on Sunday evenings at 8.30. In an interview, she said she was appalled by the sexual innuendo and treatment of women on the program, particularly its references to homosexuality and a scene featuring a woman publicly removing her bra. Diet of Gratuitous Sex she wrote 45 companies that advertised on that and subsequent episodes accusing them of, quote-unquote, helping to feed our kids a steady diet of gratuitous sex and violence. I care that there are advertisers out there paying a freight for this, she said. They are taking my dollars and putting them into softcore pornography. Executives at Fox acknowledge that Married with Children stretches the limits of acceptable programming but said its provocative scripts and situations are merely a realistic depiction of lower middle class family values. Al Bundy is not supposed to be a sophisticated man who recognizes that women are equal to men, Mr. Kellner said, referring to the father of the family, a shoe store clerk who frequently berates and belittles his wife. Mr. Kellner called the show a descendant of the situation comedies of the 70s like All in the Family and Maud which explored controversial issues in a humorous yet trenchant way. With groundbreaking shows, it's difficult to make judgments, he said, blatantly crude. The show has its adherents, Paul Shulman said of the Paul Shulman Company, a service that buys televisions time for advertisers. Called it the second funniest show on TV after Cheers. John J. O'Connor, television critic for the New York Times, wrote, Married with Children was blatantly crude. Among the scenes he objected to was one in which a family dog was shot while having a bowel movement. Fox executives refused to provide a tape of the episode in question. Mr. Kellner said his decision to tone down the program had no connection to Ms. Ricolta's campaign. He said he wanted to eliminate, quote-unquote, a group of double entendres and innuendos from the program. But he acknowledged that he reviewed the episode in question after receiving Ms. Ricolta's complaints. A loyal audience. Married with Children has garnered a loyal audience, particularly among men between the ages 18 and 49, Mr. Kellner said. The show's ratings have climbed steadily since its first season. Last week, the program scored the second highest rating and share in its competitive Sunday evening slot, behind the perennial CBS hit Murder, She Wrote. According to the A.C. Nelson Company, the Fox show had a rating of 12.5 points. Each point represents 904,000 households and drew 18% of the viewing audience. Coca-Cola will not drop its advertising completely, but will make decisions, quote-unquote, on an episode-by-episode basis, said Mr. Torsini, a company spokesman. He added that Herbert was prompted to take action by Miss Ricolta's letter. Despite the vows of companies to tighten procedures, few people in the industry predicted that advertisers would abandon the show or other popular syndicated programs like Geraldo and the Morton Downey Jr. show in any great numbers. Miss Ricolta, who has written hundreds of letters to advertisers protesting the Fox program, said she planned to start an organization to identify, target, and boycott advertisers who advertise on these shows. Ms. Ricolta said that she was surprised by the response to her campaign, quote-unquote, I expect it to be disregarded, she said. Her kids, apparently, you know, she was on some treadmill trying to lose seven pounds, and the kids were, were in the living room or whatever, and 
I, like, why would the kids be watching... You know, that's, like, the weirdest thing. Let's talk about every aspect of this entire debacle. I mean, who on earth puts their kids in front of a television set without knowing what's coming on? Like... I have, you know, we all talked about how we're going to basically force our kids to be uh, like mini us's. <laughs> yeah. Like my kid will be watching, you know, Ninja Turtles, uh, The Simpsons, uh, everything I grew up on in the world. I don't know. I, I, Scooby-Doo, uh, I suppose. And, mm-hmm. you know, like whatever. I don't know what I'm into. I forgot. But <laughs> I I'll, I'll have them watching basically everything I grew up on. Yeah. So how do you put your kids in front of a... Uh, I, I think that it's also this, though, Alex, where you have to look like TV has changed a lot since then. And and this is a, uh, you know, huge moment in in the shape of how TV is, was this show. We've talked about that. But before this show, it, it, comparing it to now is like crazy. But 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 before the show, even then, you could just everything was supposed to be 100 percent like family friendly at that time. You know what I mean? it was probably natural for, for moms or whatever to just use the TV as, as a babysitter uh, distraction, you know, a babysitter almost uh, while, while they were doing something, you turn the TV on, you know, it's Bert and Ernie or something. I, so I kind of understand that at a different time, like now you would know to monitor what the kid would be watching on TV. But back then you probably didn't have to you, What was the worst thing on TV back then? Married with children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh huh. Let's almost take the side of Terry Ricolta because we have nothing against her, really, because she only helped us. Uh, she's the reason we're sitting here, I'm sure. You know, if the show lasted four seasons or three seasons, would we be sitting here? No. Would it? Would, would this show have been anything? For, like, would I, as a kid, be grasping these four seasons or three seasons? I don't. I don't know. Yeah, it wouldn't have had the legacy. No, I wouldn't have had anything. I wouldn't have fallen in love with Al Bundy in the first... I mean, maybe, but not enough to do a show about him. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I probably have Terry Ricolta to thank for this. So, let's take her side for a second. And uh, let's talk about, you know, is the show pushing it too far? What were the, the moments where this might have taken place? You know... I don't know. I was born with the sense of humor or whatever that any time I watched Mary with Children, I never thought it was too far. The only time I really kind of addressed that idea was while we were doing this podcast. I tried to play devil's advocate and I would say, wow, can you believe they said this or can you believe they said that? You know, like I was trying to I was trying to um, take the point of view of somebody who's not into this, you know? And I would say, wow, can you imagine if this, you know, and Jerry did it and Ju- uh, Justin did it too. You know, we, we all said, wow, can you believe that Al said this or whatever? So, you know, cause we're open to the idea that everybody's not into this and we realize it's on primetime television or, or right before primetime, whatever the time slot it was. Uh, eight, In 1989 30? too. That, yeah, we always address what year it was, right. So we said this a lot. And and not that any of us don't have that sense of humor. Clearly we do, or we wouldn't be uh, <laughs> down for doing this show. Yeah. So, uh, okay, I'm just going to blast through. Bear with me, guys. I'm going to blast through. Just give me, like, uh, I'm going to say, like, 15 lines really quick. Because uh, I don't want to go any further. I think it's, like, there's no point. So I'm basically going to go from episode one to like, uh, I don't know, 20 or whatever or 25. And I'm going to highlight the moments on the show that might have overstepped boundaries of, you know, television or appropriate television. So the pilot show, Al basically says, let's have sex. And they have sex. Right away, they're not opposed to it. Thinergy, Patsy, portrait of a stewardess in training. That's a porno. They talked about porn. By the second episode. Episode three, I didn't shoot the deputy. They had sex. They were they were going to have sex on the couch until the neighborhood wash walked in. They shot Bella in the middle of a bowel movement. Episode four, whose room is it anyway? Al says, why is she, why is she the one racking the balls? And, uh, you know, it's a sexual, you know, thing. 
Uh, episode 5, have you driven a Ford lately? Marcy has sex in the backseat of a car. Like, were people talking about this stuff on television before this show? Probably not. You know, this is pushing the boundaries. Episode 7, married without children. Al says the two lines I highlighted, I'm going to give her a jump and I'm going to bet her down before the fight or whatever. You know, they're, we're going to watch a boxing fight. Uh, episode 8, the poker game. They were building a woman with Jamie Lee Curtis's breasts and her ass or whatever, objectifying women. And then a homeless guy gets a hand job from a hooker for $5. Then he got Al loses his cherry after that, episode 10. Do you want to go in the bedroom? Yeah, sure, since, since I'm here or whatever. <laughs> and then the other, and then they're going to shoot a video. You know, and then Nightmare on Elm Street, Marcy's having dreams about sleeping with Peg's husband. Buck can do it all about sex with dogs, but it's still about sex. Girls just want to have fun. They go to a female strip club. Born to walk, Kelly says, I'm tired of the put out or get out. <laughs> and Kelly's a kid at that point. Uh, Alley of the Dolls, Kelly is used as a sexual object to trick guys into throwing gutter walls. Razor's Edge, Marcy's holding out sex to make Steve shave his beard. Earth Angel, come on, do we really have to explain that one? And better watch out, Santa dies, and they have to give a warning before you watch the show. So, let's just stop there. Here's a, a lot of what she complained about were visual things. So, it doesn't seem she cares about the, like them making jokes about sex but there's still visual things that were happening in the show that they didn't get into like santa dying she didn't mention that yeah santa died like so we got a question somehow this episode was the first episode she ever watched uh no okay okay let's stop there do you believe that uh i i'm gonna say yes just because there's way like well, I, I, if she would have seen the show beforehand, she would have heard those jokes and she would have been like, oh, no, not for me. Right. And maybe she wouldn't have seen like an episode where like worth writing in for. Yeah, worth writing in for. Maybe she didn't see the episode where Marcy takes off her trench coat and is in lingerie to get right. her husband to sleep with her. No, shave. Oh, yeah. To, well, to shave, to get him to shave or Kelly getting objectified in that skimpy ass dress for the bowling episode. Like maybe she didn't see those things. I find like the anti obscenity like standpoint kind of kind of interesting because it is one of those stances where it's like they like we don't care what happens as long as it doesn't hurt anybody. Like if you want to take in, you know, obscene stuff then like it doesn't hurt you to do that it doesn't hurt me that you were doing that but like her stance is that that it is harmful to people to view this stuff in one woman's crusade against sex on television now this is what made a television mother see red on fox television's hit comedy married with children terry ricolta got so sore she wrote letters to the sponsors and some of them pulled their ads from the show but tonight an executive for fox is saying mrs ricolta has no business telling other people what to watch art societies and all of these uh, things that you know rather wealthy people do i don't think that she has is living the normal american life and I don't think she's able to make a judgment about what is funny to the majority of American people. Incidentally, Kellner says that the show's ratings are up since Mrs. Ricolta began her crusade. We'll find out that they put her up to it. Probably. <laughs> Everyone has a free speech issue, don't they? We'll see you tomorrow. If I was a kid, which I was, and I watched this show, if I watched it, I watched it and heard what they said or saw the messages they were sending to me, and I went, ugh. This turns me off. I don't want to be a part of this. I would stop watching and I would say, I don't like this. That's it. Yeah, here's here's the thing. Like, here, like, I understand that you're offended, but that does not mean you should take away from someone else because we should be able to judge ourselves what we should and should not see. We should just like the writer Marcy said, we do the British way. You just turn the channel. <laughs> Yeah, that and and I I that, I make that argument for so many things in life, where it's like if you don't like it, why do you keep going around it? 
You know what I mean? Why do you want to take it away from other people who do like it? Because you think you're smarter and you think you're better than everyone. And she thought right. that she knew what everyone else in America was watching was wrong. They don't yeah. need to be watching something like this. And she was going to make that call. But here's the thing. No one had said anything yet. We had a whole episode about a serial killer who shook the hand of Andy Griffith. No one cared. <laughs> we had jokes about gym teacher lesbians. No one cared. Okay? We we had the sexualization of a teenage girl. No one cared. Well, and even if somebody did care, they Not just enough didn't to write watch a, it. a damn letter. They turned it off. Here's an example, the, a, a true life example, okay? My grandfather absolutely hated two shows. The Simpsons and Beavis and Butthead. Oh, <laughs> listen, I'm not going to talk to this guy ever. <laughs> All right. Now, I'll tell you this. He just didn't watch them. Like, if it was on, he'd be like, oh, why are you watching that? Sh-? What is weird about him is, like, I don't think either of those shows would bother him now. Like, he's watched, like, South Park and stuff. So, like, I don't know if it was just, like, at the time when he felt that way. But... That that's a prime example. Like he didn't try to, uh, you know, write a letter and get it taken off the air. He just didn't watch it. He just yeah. did, he, he thought it, it was that's crap. a real man. Okay, listen. Can I just I, I just want to put on record real quick that I I am obsessed with Beavis and Butthead and The Simpsons. Okay, that is true. Alex <laughs> called me one time and I didn't answer my phone. He left me a whole voicemail in Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> I love so that's true. And Butthead too. But I wish they would put out uh, the damn entire series. I want to get to my point that I was trying to make, though. All of this stuff has happened in this show. And this show, the this particular episode, yes, was a little overly sexual. And it was a did, little surprising. Like the like there's like some serious side boob. Yeah. So but here's the thing. I don't think this the straight sexuality is what is the reason she wrote. I think the reason she wrote was for two specific things. Al calling the gay dude a queen because it's it, she felt like that's promoting the gay culture. And Yeah, really? I thought it was demoting them. Well, it uh, uh, depends on how you look at it. But a lot of times, even when you have something that like pokes a little fun at the gay culture, a lot of people still look at that as promoting the gay culture. He didn't, because Al didn't slander. Al didn't like call him a bunch of names. He was. He just said, and they wonder why they call us Queen because he was wearing a tiara, a, a very small joke. I 100 percent think she saw that as that. Oh, my kids are going to think they can wear tiaras now. You're supposed to be on Al's side no matter what. So if Al's saying Queen, he's not praising this guy. No, he's not. But he's also not saying he's a bad person or anything like that. He's saying you're. You, if you want to wear a tiara, you wonder why we call you Queen. I don't think they are because if they were being hateful, Marcy would like uh, Amanda Burst would not have stayed on the show, obviously. Well, so, that's not necessarily true, right? Like people, people will stay and put up with a lot. Of, I mean, look, like yeah, but, like a lot of people stay. Like there's tons of stories okay. of that's, there's tons that's of stories true. of actors who were gay dealing with tons of harassment for years on a show. That's but true, they, but they, have they you ever heard Amanda Burr talk negatively about the show creators? No, no. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't – like, they're not against gays. She said that everyone was supportive of her coming out. That's Listen, right. it was just the time where those jokes were more common because it was just the way people thought. Based off previous shows in this series, I don't think it was necessary – I think if you took out – the gay guy and you took out the old guy she would not have wrote, written a letter really you think my that feeling. i i yeah. don't think that at all look dude you got to look at it this way too this is 1989 if this is the episode that she's seen this is the episode she's seen you couldn't just go on dvr or, or online and, and look up previous episodes if you missed it you missed it like and and we don't even know what the run my, reruns were like my on point Fox is, is if she if saw other pleasant. episodes if she saw other episodes she would not have written a letter. She wrote a letter on this episode. If she saw other episodes, she wouldn't have made it to this show. This ep- uh, this episode. She wouldn't have made it this far. Those episodes were not enough to push her over the edge because I, I don't think the over-sexuality was the issue as much as the, well, the what did she homosexuality say? Do we have, do we have, cross-dressing. 
she pointed out four scenes that okay. specifically got her. Steve touching the mannequin. Okay. It was the women show the woman showing her breast to Al. It was yeah. the gay guy, and it was the old man in his underwear. Those are the four scenes. Yeah. So equally, like the just the I, and, sexual tone as well seems to be a big problem. And I'm saying that if it would if you took out the gay guy and you took out the old man wearing underwear, she would not have written a letter. This is the most sexual episode in terms of visual, uh, vis- in terms of the visuals that we see. Like the girl literally had like you can almost see her nipple when when the camera's behind her. All right, and uh, after she takes her bra off. Yeah, you really can. But like, you know what's funny? Watch it again. And then also she covers her her boobs with her yeah, hands. Like that's pretty crazy. Her covering her boobs with her hand. That's the scene that she was specifically talking about. She wasn't talking about the back shot, which to me the back shots work. Well, if she's talking about that scene, it all happens at once, so it could within six seconds. Yeah. Well, I know, but I'm saying she specifically talks about her covering her boobs, and to me, I'm like, I think the back shot was way worse. Yeah, well, I mean, if you've seen it for the first time, you just it's the last thing that you see. That's what's most prevalent in your mind. And y'all don't have to agree with me on this one, but I, I'll stick to my guns on this one. And I think if it wasn't for the the man wearing women clothing and the homosexuality, she would not have written anything. I think she I think this type of woman would write a letter regardless or call in regardless. Like if if it was if she's if one of the other episodes, uh, the episode where, where Kelly was uh, very sexualized. Uh, if she had seen that episode first, or she had seen a- any like any of the bigger risque moments, I, right. she's the type of lady that would probably would call in. All right, I'm going to read an article from the National Catholic Reporter from May 19th, 1989. It was titled "Threat to Censor Broad Snips and Bright Stars" by Dick Ryan. I I'm just going to read things that are different from things we've already heard or have been playing or will play on the rest of the show. So here are some parts of the article. When the smoke and raiding settled, Ricolta had achieved just the opposite of what she hoped to accomplish. Curious television viewers, those little devils thinking they had missed something, turned on their sets and the ratings for Married with Children revived quite nicely. Many of the viewers, average ordinary husbands and wives, raising families and striving valiantly to pay the bills discovered they were watching, well, themselves, of at least people they knew or knew about in the neighborhood. Ricolta is the ideal wife-mother crusader, but she has all the natural instincts of most censors. She condemns too eagerly. There is no compromise or middle ground in her all-or-nothing approach. She doesn't think the rest of humanity should watch or enjoy what she doesn't like. Dare we presume that Ricolta is perfectly capable of getting on her feet and turning to the program of her choice? Nobody is constrained to watch the Bundys or forced to listen to the kind of dumb dialogue that the nicer people of this world may find, let's say, gauche. But neither should anyone be deprived of the opportunity to watch the antithesis of Robert Young and Jane Wyatt simply because the Bundys are not the kind of folks Ricolta generally invites to her barbecues. There is one other thing. Crusader Ricolta complained that married with children is demeaning to women. Has this woman ever really watched television before? Does she watch it now? Has she ever counted ways many of the sitcoms, not to mention commercials, go out of their way to portray men, especially fathers, as blithering idiots? The babbling father and family ties is a case in point. So is Roseanne's husband who seems to enjoy looking and talking like a jerk. So are Bob Newhart, Danny DeVito in the old Taxi series, and Danny Fielding in Night Court, television's unchallenged dregs and male sleaze. And if they're not bad enough, let me hasten to include those twin towers of American manhood that are the fast food version of Attila the Hun and the Ayatollah, Archie Bunker and J.R. Ewing. There are probably a few fearful souls out there this very moment convulsed by the fear that another Ricola may ride into town and decree the programming depicting smoking, baldness, overweight, freckles, bad breath, or passion for chocolate are dangerous for your health and demeaning to humanity. 
Even so, Ricolta might do well to sublimate her bile and target some of the other things on TV that perhaps more seriously require her vigilance and her typewriter. News stories, for example, about America's continuing disdain to the homeless are more than lewd, while most stories about your run-of-the-mill politician and his first day with the grand jury are grossly indecent. And just about any commercial, coaxing and lying and seductive is arrogantly demeaning to all of us, even Alan Peg Bundy. I cited how many, what, 20, 22 episodes where you could have had a problem with something? Why this episode clearly, I mean, can we all agree this is the most risque episode or whatever? I mean, that we've seen so far. Yeah, for sure. It has the most, so. it has the most visual pieces to it. Mm hmm. Right. If a normal person who's not into this watched this, and, and they put this on and that was on. Would you be offended? I mean, I, I think absolutely. It... I think absolutely you would be offended. If, if you're the type of person that doesn't want to hear anything sexual, you don't talk about that. How you don't even tell your kids about like anything sexual. Like that's a hundred percent no go. Like right. absolutely this would be offensive to yeah, you. Yeah, if my kids were watching this, I'd be like, what the hell is this? You know, yeah, I guess I would be offended. Like, for example, the only reason I could really have this point of view is because I have, like, an aunt. She would be like, oh, my God, what is this? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but I, clearly I, I committed to a Mary with Children podcast. I'm not really offended by anything. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's like. I mean, the things that I watched, like nothing, literally nothing can offend me. Yeah, exactly. And we're all from a horror podcast, so clearly nothing offends us. No Ma'am will be right back. Be sure to join their Facebook group page for all the podcast news and updates. Just type in www.facebook.com slash groups slash Married with Children podcast. Be sure to subscribe to them on iTunes and please leave a review telling them what you think of the show. To subscribe to their YouTube channel, just go to Channels and search up Married with Children Podcast. You can email them at marriedwchildrenpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for checking out this review. Now the guys are going to give their final thoughts of this week's episode. I don't have any problem with somebody being offended. Like you're allowed to be offended. That is your right to feel that way about something. I only have an issue is when you take it upon yourself to make sure that others don't have the chance to be offended or not be offended. I think, I think that's what makes her, you know, and obviously I'm glad she did it because it made the show bigger and things like that. So, but I'm just saying that mentality to begin with, I find annoying. I want to talk – okay, my uh, granny, who is a southern lady, uh -huh. who is a southern Baptist and has a thing for marrying southern Baptist preachers. Okay. Uh, <laughs> How many did she marry? Uh, two. <laughs> oh, okay. My granny ha had, a, had a really good saying when it came to things on TV. One time we rented this like – almost like an amateur home funniest video thing – but it had a little bit of the risque stuff too. And my gramps was like, why are you letting him watch this? Cause I guess, uh, I think a lady got her top pulled off or something in one of them. <laughs> my granny was just like, if they could see it at the beach, they can see it on TV. <laughs> and, and he was completely against this. Now, mm -hmm. later on in this same video, okay, keep in mind, female nudity has already happened. My gramps is already like, I don't think they should watch this. My granny's like, it's okay. Later on, they show a, like, drag queen, and she immediately turns it off. Huh. So like, weird. Immediately turns it off. And she was like, okay, that's enough. Y'all need to go to bed. And it wasn't until – I didn't understand. I thought it was just time to go to bed. But I asked her years later when she still talked to me and was just like, hey, what happened? She goes, she goes I didn't want your mind to get warped and think you could wear women's clothing. Now, did you end up wearing that's women's so clothes? It's so bizarre that people actually think that. That, that but something that's you reason... see will make you gay or <laughs> transgender. Yes, like that, but it's that's insane the point to think I'm that. I'm bringing up because of her, because of Terry's religious background, 
that's what I'm just like, that's what makes me go. That's why she immediately called this out because my granny am, was the same way. If you watch Will and Grace, well, you need to ask that person that question. The person who thinks that you're able to turn that way, be like, okay, so you would be gay if you saw a bunch of this stuff. And they'd be like, oh, of course not. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my God. To, to, to think that is insane. Cause, but they do. They think that I know I was raised. I'm from Alabama. I am from the Bible Belt. And they literally think. If you see that, you you'll know, become gay. If you see that, you will become gay. My uncle will, would not let his nephew talk to me because he thought I would turn him gay. Okay. Okay. This I, is... I'm not even gay. But, but <laughs> That's really I'm... bad, Jerry. <laughs> well, I'm just... Let's get back to Mar – like you turned me gay, by the way. I didn't <laughs> want to mention that. Okay, she pulled sponsors. Okay, let's get back. Let's let's get to that aspect. Oh yeah, that's a fun one. Okay, so uh, who pulled out? Do uh, McDonald's and and yeah, I think Coca Cola did. I don't know if they did. I think uh, Procter and Gamble, like which, uh, Monopoly, which actually would hurt a show very bad if sponsors pull out, right? But but then if your show does amazing, those sponsors will come right back. Like I read uh, read in many of these articles already. There, there was a line of people waiting to sponsor this show. So people uh, didn't care all that much. Apparently at that time, nobody was watching the show. Like that was the big excuse that these people gave. You know, when they responded to Terry's art, uh, uh, email or where, uh, however the hell she sent it at the time, just letter. When they responded to her, they told her that they didn't even – really watch Married with Children, it would, it, to them, it was just a time slot to fit their commercial. Like, that's what they said to her. They, they told her they don't even watch it. They said, okay, well, we'll, we'll be more strict in what we uh, approve and we'll watch it. We'll actually watch the show where, where our commercials are in. Believe it or not, that's what, it, that's what they said. They didn't even know what they were... They were putting their commercials in. I guess after Archie Bunker and All in the Family and all this other kind of stuff, this was the next step. This is where the world was getting to. You're allowed to have orgasms on television, like Marcy in I'm Going to Sweatland. You're allowed to say, I'm going to bed my wife down. And you're able to sexualize girls under age as in i think that's worse now than like you wouldn't even do that now really <laughs> alley of the dolls yeah i i don't know i mean would you bend a 15 year old girl over a ball return now uh no they do it themselves <laughs> on youtube now yeah it's like it, it, listen I'll, I'll give terry this much credit yes you're right you're you're protesting a show that's pushing the boundaries yeah okay I don't know. I feel like if Michael Moy or Ron Levitt are thinking that way, then then it can't be that odd that maybe 20 million other people aren't thinking that way. The only way that protesting actually works is if the owner or the studio or the company behind the product give in. That's it, if like Fox like with Silent Night and Night. Fox gave in a little bit. They pulled a season three episode that did not air until years, years, years later. Mm -hmm. And oh, they, yeah. they made them tone down yeah. a lot of things for season uh, four. Okay. So for season three, what was already recorded was the camping show. I'm just going to cite these two because I don't have time to do everything else. And... Uh, the courtroom episode. I forgot. Uh, I'll see you in court or something like that. Yep. So those were the two we're going to cite. What they did with the camping show, they had a problem after she did this. Uh, oh, no, wait. That was supposed to be the first episode. Yeah, the camping oh, wow. episode was already recorded. That Wait, so that means that they already had a problem. Well, that one they just didn't know if they, sh they should start the season with women's periods. So they already knew they were pushing boundaries. Right. Mm -hmm. And they thought that that was the episode that was going to be an issue. Wow. And they didn't think the cops run it over would be an issue? Uh, no, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs>
because they they already made sexual jokes. They didn't think sexuality was going to be a problem. The period at the time was still something you didn't really talk about. It wasn't on TV. Yeah, you, why, you didn't even know. <laughs> You didn't yeah. even know about it until you until all the girls like went and watched a video in in class in like fifth yeah. grade. Like married with children, thank you for teaching me about life. Yeah, but the, so they already did that. So all that all that this did was made them calm down on sexuality for like season four, maybe a little into season five. But they had started getting so much. The ratings shot up. Sponsors were there in droves because it made. People realize, you know what? This is a show people want to watch. We just needed we needed one person to get pissed off because this woman is someone Al Bundy would have made fun of. <laughs> this woman is Marcy would have made fun of. Marcy actually did make fun of her. Marcy would have been like, oh, a woman can't show herself on camera, but a man can. Uh, Marcy actually said a woman in Michigan was offended, and that's why the show was off the air. I, I wonder how Terry Ricolta felt when everything she did just backfired. completely backfired. <laughs> Have you seen her? Like, you guys know what she looks like. Yeah. Oh, dude, if, if if this was a perfect world, she'd be on this show explaining to us how she felt. She's like this? 73 now, so. Oh, Jesus. All I know is in those pictures, she looks like someone who would tell you that... Like, uh, like a see you next Tuesday? Yeah, yes. Hey, her original name is Stern, which is funny because she went on to protest Howard Stern also. <laughs> <laughs> which I... which I, who, A person I love, by the way. She protested Phil Donahue, who has been talked about and married with children also. Oh, yeah. Donahue and uh, Oprah are big... I bet she also protested... Child's Play and Silent Night, Deadly Night as well. <laughs> I, I'm like a huge fan of like these history because we on, on the Child's Play show we talked about there was like massive protests for like the Child's Play films when the like like two and three when they came out like there was actually stories of people like a kid like killing his sister like or something and then another person who like tied somebody up and and kept saying like hi my name's Chucky want to play and shit like that. So, like, there was a huge controversy with Child's Play, but it's kind of been swept under the rug. And, of course, Silent Night, Deadly Night had, like, some of the craziest con controversy. Pretty much killed that film. Um, it actually opened better than Elm Street because it was opened the same year. And then it just got pulled its second week. Wow. But it's really cool to hear, like, when people actually have an effect, right? Like, they're so outraged and then they end up getting something pulled or ads pulled or something. It's neat. It's a cool conversation. Does Married with Children Go Too Far? Will It Give In to Critics? By Howard Polskin. Early in 1987, Ron Levitt and Michael G. Moy sat edgily in a conference room filled with the executives of the fledgling Fox Broadcasting Company. Few writers in Hollywood were as successful as Levitt and Moy at delivering a punchline. They had worked on some of television's most successful sitcoms, including The Jeffersons, Happy Days, and Laverne and Shirley. Now they were about to create one of their most famous scenes. Paul Lindbergh, executive vice president of the market research firm ASI, addressed the group. The subject was the test audience's reaction to Married with Children, the bold half-hour sitcom Levitt and Moy had created for the Fox network. Lindbergh had some news about Married with Children, and the news wasn't good. The meeting lasted about an hour, but Levitt remembers it all came down to a few key sentences. People seem to think the show is kind of funny, Levitt recalls Lindbergh telling him. What I would suggest from the testing is to make these people obviously love each other. Show that they care more about their children, and make these children a little less weird. Then you might have something here. Levitt listened carefully, then he dropped the bomb. You know, he replied, you're the reason why television sucks. As if on cue, Levitt and Moy closed their folders, scooped up their belongings, bowed theatrically, and made their exit. The epilogue of that story is not that Levitt and Moy were fired from the show. Indeed, just the opposite. They became something akin to outlaw heroes. The show aired virtually untouched. The L&M boys took all the elements they displayed at that meeting, the raw comic edge, the manic energy, the rudeness, and their flawless timing, 
and applied it directly to Mary, where it has become one of the funniest and raunchiest shows on television. More importantly for Fox, Married has blossomed into the highest rated show on the network. Ratings last season were up 117% over the season before, more than twice as big an increase as that of any other show on primetime television. But Married has also become the network's most controversial program, and Fox is caught in a bind. By toning Married down, Fox risks losing its audience, but if it keeps pushing the boundaries of good taste, Fox endangers its relationship with its married advertisers. While the fuss is married as offensive as some critics charge, or is all the noise a hysterical byproduct of an anything goes season in which television standards took a serious turn south? Perhaps a little of both. Television critics are split over the merits of the show. Ed Bark, television critic of the Dallas Morning News, sums it up best. It's one of the funniest shows on television. Its charm is that it has absolutely no redeeming value, but it's easily the coarsest show that's ever been on primetime television. I cringe at times with things like father-husband Al's infatuation with having a bowel movement. Married was conceived as a show that would make people laugh and cringe, both probably at the same time. It was the l and boys' response to the goody-goody tone of the Cosby show and family ties. On the set, the series was even known as Not the Cosbys. Married is about the Bundys, a family who are, well, let's just call them oinks. One insufficient income with nasty kids and spouse. Al Bundy, Ed O'Neill, program centerpiece, is the king of the oinks. He works as a shoe salesman. He's short of money and swamped with bills. He hasn't caught a break in years. His son, Bud, David Faustino, is obnoxious. And his voluptuous teenage daughter, Kelly, Christina Applegate, appears to give away her virtue with ease. He's got a sex-starved, work-aversive wife, Peg, Katie Seagal. The core of their relationship plays off a simple, crude theme. She wants to have sex, and he doesn't. Not the Cosbys, indeed. But it is the show that Fox wanted. The l and boys say Fox basically promised them from the start that they could have total control. Current Fox officials have refused to comment for this article. But ultimately, Fox couldn't step away. There were problems with the bold nature of the show. For instance, the projected premiere episode of the 88-89 season dealt with a camping trip during which three women all start their menstrual periods simultaneously. The title, A Period Piece. After the l and boys fought a bitter losing battle, the episode was changed to The Camping Show. It was rescheduled to later in the season and then broadcast an hour later than its regular 8.30 p.m. Sunday night slot. Problems like this were nothing new on Mary. They had started with the pilot episode. We got a few thousand calls from Fox to censor it, says Levitt. We said not a chance. What it came down to was, they said ordinarily we could do what we want, but because this was the first thing ever going out in prime time on the Fox network, the first night of broadcasting, please don't do this. So we said, okay. After that, they were cool with us. They left us alone. Until the nameless evil from Detroit, says Moy. He is referring to Terry Ricolta, 44, a wealthy suburban Detroit housewife with four children who stepped into the picture last January. She had happened upon the January 15th episode of the program titled Her Cups Runneth Over about Peggy's quest for a new bra. They talked about vibrators, says Ricolta. They had a man walking around in stockings and high heels. A woman took her bra off, with her back to the camera. I was shocked. And the dialogue was rough. In one scene, Al, Peg, and neighbor Marcy, Amanda Bears, talk about breasts. Marcy. You know what would happen if men had breasts? Al, we wouldn't need women anymore. Peggy, and if you had what other men have, I wouldn't need batteries. Al, so that's what happened to my diehard. Recall to call the network in Los Angeles to complain and got through to Marcy Vosberg, co-writer of the episode. Essentially, Vosberg told her that the show was occasionally pushing the limits of broadcast television and that if Recolta didn't like it, she had the final form of censorship changing the channel or turning off the set. As a parting remark, Ricolta said, I bet your sponsors would like to hear about this. And that's when the light went on in her head. Eventually, she wrote to many of the show's advertisers. The responses from some companies showed they shared some of her concerns. 
The January 15th show violated any reasonable standard of good taste, opined the Gillette. Not a desirable vehicle for Warner Lambert advertising, came the reply from the pharmaceutical giant. Recoltus Crusade led to a front page story in the New York Times, triggering an avalanche of publicity. Recolta herself became a celebrity. The end result, though, appeared negligible. Advertising time was sold out through the year. Depending whether one quotes Recolta or Fox, only one to three companies canceled advertising on Mary because of her activism. But she created a climate of fear around the show that exists to this day in the advertising community. Meanwhile, Levitt and Moy were eager to respond to Recolta, but Fox and Columbia Pictures Television executives wouldn't let them. We were told we were not allowed to speak to anybody, says Moy. To me, silence means I'm guilty and I'm sorry. First of all, I'm not guilty of anything, and I'm sure as hell not sorry for anything that I've done. I just wanted a chance to say that, and I couldn't. Just before the Recolta flap broke, the program had been in production for I'll See You in Court, one of the most controversial episodes of the series. Boy, did we get hell for that, says Levitt. The basic story was that Al and Peggy had not had sex in a while, and her friend advises her to change the venue. So they go to a motel where their friends Steve and Marcy go. The management gives them an X-rated tape to watch. They realize that they're watching a tape of Steve and Marcy. It turns out Al and Peggy are also taped during sex. They find out and decide to sue the motel for a million dollars. The jury finds that Steve and Marcy deserve $10,000. But the Bundys get nothing because the act was so short the jury couldn't determine if sex had taken place. The network demanded 30 changes in the script before it was even taped. At the end of the week, says Levitt, we were going to quit. We felt we had compromised the show to a point where we were losing a lot of good stuff. Levitt and Moy ignored some of the instructions and shot the episode anyway. Fox never ran I'll See You in Court, and now it's referred to as the lost episode. I'll See You in Court was just one of the casualties that the l and boys attribute to Recolta. Another is that this fall, Married's time slot has been shifted from 8.30, when younger children are more likely to be watching, to the more adult-oriented 9 o'clock time period. And there are still more aftershocks of the Recolta affair. We're under a microscope now, says Levitt. Fox is more nervous than before, but we're getting away with things that we couldn't get away with on a network. We complain in degrees. We're appreciative. Despite, or because of, all the press attention the show received in March when Recolta went public, the Nielsens remained healthy. Ratings for the upcoming season could decrease, though, because of the more competitive time slot where Married will be up against highly promoted movies of the week. But don't look for a softening of the coarse, sophomoric humor that is the show's prickly spine. The debut episode for the 89-90 season is expected to be Here's Looking at You, Kid. It's about a neighborhood peeping Tom who won't peep at Peg, much to her disappointment. So she gets Al to have sex with her five nights in a row, but he gets exhausted. So he decides to pose as the peeping Tom and peep at Peg, but the neighborhood vigilantes catch him in the act and... We're not going to change anything, predicts Moy. We'll do our slate of 22 episodes. At least that's what we'll write and tape. Who knows what will air. Wow, that was great. Uh, special thanks to Jamie Sammons for reading that. That was the TV Guide special Married with Children, the one, I guess it's kind of famous for Married with Children. It's the, probably the only time they're on the cover, I, I think. But uh, it's for the TV Guide July 29th to August 4th in 1989. It was 75 cents back then. But uh, yeah, that was an interesting article. So thanks again, Jamie. Um, there are different points of view for everything in the world there's there's nothing on earth that will ever satisfy a hundred percent of the public all that matters is what connects to you what speaks to you terry ricolta might be actually okay with this show at this point she might think that oh my god i was protesting mara children i should have heard the rap music in the 90s when it was all gangster rap and killing people you guys were just joking around, and I'm worried. And, and it's all perspective. It's all where you are at this moment until somebody else pushes the boundaries something further. You know, and if you're okay with it. Uh, most people are not okay with anything that they weren't brought up with. At the end of the day, people are going to be offended by different things. Okay? You don't have to make a mess about it. You can, you can say your piece, you cannot. Yeah. 
Thank you, Marcy Vosberg. We didn't realize, but we're into the British thing. That If you don't like it, change the channel. Mm-hmm. Well, here I am screaming all night. Terry Ricolta has me mental. That doesn't happen often, but it's okay. I like her anyway, like I said. Guys, um, so yeah, this is the last special that you're uh, ever going to hear if you're not a member of our Patreon. So become a patron, support the Married with Children podcast. We need dollars to put on fishing lines so we can go to the nudie bar and, and have a good time without doing the podcast. So like I said, this is a, a weekly podcast. You're going to get a new review of a new episode of Married with Children every single week, regardless. However, if you're not a patron of the show, you're going to miss out on great stuff, like this special would have been a Patreon exclusive. Uh, all the ones coming down the line, there are no exclusives right now. But we, you know, even if you wanted to donate a couple dollars for no reason, you know, a lot of people do things like that. Uh, just to support their show because they know the hard work they put into it. That's always available. If you want the exclusive bonus content that we're going to start releasing in November, guys. By the way, Halloween was yesterday. Happy Halloween. I hope you dressed as Al Bundy or Peg this uh, year. This November, we're going to have exclusives we haven't decided yet. We might do a commentary where we talk over an episode that you watch with us. We might do a special on the Married Children comic books. We might do a special on the Married Children board game with a with help from a friend. We might do a highlight of one of the cast members of Married Children. Or we might review a movie that one of the Married with Children cast was on. You know, like I said in that promo I made, if you want to hear a review of Dutch or, or even Hondo, a movie Al likes, or, you know, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead, all that stuff will be exclusive to patrons of the podcast. So we will start cranking those out, like I said, at this moment, unless you wanted to just so, show support to the show and say, hey, you guys do a, a lot of work. Here's a couple bucks. Uh, $4 in a month is is a lot less. I mean, I, I spend $2 a day on coffee. So add that up. Uh, and I would much rather, uh, <laughs> if I had a podcast I love, I'd rather give them the $4. Yeah, guys, uh, please support the show. Go to patreon.com p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash married with children podcast and support your favorite podcast who give our all every week to bring this great show back to life we'll let you know anytime there's an exclusive and you want to if you decide you want to become a patron after if you see what's out there and say okay fine but uh it is greatly appreciated we love married with children and we have a whole season three coming your way. We're going to review every episode. And we're looking forward to it. Uh, Justin, and, uh, we're, we're all here because we love the same show. Prison. Me too. <laughs> yeah, try not to go back. So, for Justin and Jerry, this is Al saying sayonara, Terry. Sorry, your best laid plans of mice and men did not work out. Adios. Sorry about that. Hey, thank you for the great show. Thank you for the ratings. And we will uh, <laughs> always hold you in high regard despite your plans. Mm-hmm.